Matt and Gary, welcome. Thank you so much for talking to me here this morning Great to be on here. CNBC. What is it about Davos and the World Economic Forum that attracts you to come here? Uh, well, it's a great place to spread awareness about the work we're doing. And uh, obviously, there's a huge collection of very powerful, well-connected people here. So, uh, so they're, they're good people to talk to about the work we're doing, just so we can scale faster. And Gary, with Waterdoc.org, it's, it's an initiative that you co-founded together in 2009. Over the years, how have you seen things change on the ground here at the Forum? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, here at the Forum, what we've seen is like a steady progression of conversations with different strategic partners that have worked with us and those coming to fruition through the people that we serve, right? So we, we have been able to take the awareness that Matt's talking about that we've, we've raised here and turn that into philanthropic capital, into to funding so that we can go out and have impact on the ground. And, uh, you know, when we... When we were in 2012, we'd only reached uh, about a million people with water and sanitation over the course of many years. And then from uh, now, we're reaching about a million people every quarter through safe water and sanitation. And I think the boost that we get from this and the collective partnerships that we get, uh, you know, with folks like Bank of America here and Stella Artois and Ikea, uh, Caterpillar and others, that gives us that funding that we need to, to make this work on the ground. And Matt, from your experience here, I mean, obviously you are an Oscar-winning, award-winning, internationally acclaimed actor. When you come to Davos, do people treat you differently? Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not here to talk about my day job, so um, the conversations shift pretty quickly into the work that we're doing with water.org. Um, and, and obviously what, what's different about us, which we've talked about over the years, is uh, the model that we use is, is not a direct impact model, which is what most... Uh, um, uh, water foundations do is they'll 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 raise money to drill wells and 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 we have a microfinance model that Gary pioneered uh, when we part ar around the time we partnered uh, it was being piloted and and it's just a wonderful uh, idea where Gary basically a, a, took the concepts that Muhammad Yunus pioneered um, around microfinance and applied them to water and so uh, so our model is about is about making small loans uh, ninety percent of which go to uh, women in the developing world, and uh, and and the great thing about you know this hypothesis that Gary had that's now been been borne out. We've given over three million loans at this point, and they pay back at uh, ninety nine percent. So it's a really impressive uh, model, and it's a real success story. And and it's about you know it, the message that we bring and and that we've proven is that uh, the, the the poorest people on the planet want to participate in solving their own problems, and if you just just nudge the markets a little bit towards them, um, then 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 they'll participate in 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 in, in their own solution, and that's and that's been a, a yeah. And I th I think that what we see and what we've the insight that we've gained is that poor people around the world are already paying huge amounts of money for water through these water vendors, or sometimes they're paying in terms of their time to walk and collect water. Uh, a woman I met in uh, outside the the city of Manila in the, in the slums there, Leonard Isa, I was talking with her recently. And she was paying $60 every month to these water vendors who would sell this not even safe water, you know, from tanker trucks. And so what she did, she took out a loan with one of our local partners so she could pay the connection fee. She couldn't afford, she could afford a couple of dollars a day, but she couldn't afford $300 to connect. And so she took out that loan, and now her loan payments and her water tariff combined are $10 a month. So you can see right there the power of this. When we see the poor, not as a, as a problem to be solved through charity, but as, as a market to be served. Right, they they turn into customers, right, and then they gain agency, and yeah. and, uh, and 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 so that's that that's a real kind of game changing. But do you feel there is a global water crisis? There's about 800 million people who hmm. who don't have access to safe water, hmm. and what that means, particularly for women and girls, is um, you know the the water collection often falls on them, and so there are hundreds of millions of girls who are not in school hmm. because they're 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 out collecting water, and uh, and so it's not just the the kind of the, the senseless death, and and there are about a million children who are dying every year, completely preventably, right? I mean, this is a 
something we solved in the West 100 years ago. I mean, just imagine if we cured cancer tomorrow and in 100 years people were, were still dying of it. It's, it's, yeah. it's unconscionable. But so. that's the thing, Matt, because why ask and say, do you feel it's a crisis? Obviously it is. Mm. But for a lot of people in the West, they don't quite grab mm. that concept, yeah. do they? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That's the... well they, they don't. And I think that we take it for granted, right? Yeah. Because water for us is safe and ubiquitous. We turn on a tap and it's there. Mm. But the, the water stress that's coming, and this is, this is as much a climate change issue as it is a water issue yes. because so many people around the world already live in water stress and with climate change it's too much water in so many places and too little water in others and the new york times article just this past week talking about the glaciers melting those glaciers melting and refreezing every year that's what gives like millions of people their water supply and so what we're trying to say is we can use this approach of water credit and finance so people can develop that resilience so that if they do have to drill a deeper well or they have to do take other means to improve their water supply, they have the financial means to do that. And what we're seeing is it can actually move beyond philanthropy. Since we were here last time, uh, we launched Water Equity. So that's the first ever uh, impact investment fund manager focused on solving this crisis. And so now we can actually bring investors in. We, we have about $60 million of assets under management that we then use to make loans to scale up these microloans. And then investors get repaid and they get uh, a distribution uh, on top of that through accredited investing. Is impact investing the way forward, do you think? It's a huge part of it, yeah, without a doubt. And, and for us, we kind of came to this really, it's funny because Gary's got three engineering degrees. I'm an actor. You know, it's like we, <laughs> but it's all about finance. What? But, uh, yes, we, we, finance. We, it's all about finance, and, uh, and and we've come to that after doing this for a long time. And um, and y y we were in India probably five years ago. We were we were talking to some of our partners, and um, and we asked them to identify the kind of the biggest bottleneck for them. And they all said, you know, individually, right, in in, in separate conversations, they all said access to affordable capital was their biggest roadblock and, uh, and, and that the demand was there. And in fact, the World Bank has identified 500 million people could be reached with this solution uh, that we're talking about. You know, so there's a lot of low hanging fruit that we could, you know, if, if, but it's about getting the capital into the system. And it is the system of philanthropy plus investment, right? So we use the philanthropic capital that we raise to basically correct these market failures to kind of jumpstart these loans. And that is so important with uh, those philanthropic partners. And we can turn that philanthropy into great scale. I mean, we want to raise an incremental $20 million and that would mean mean another billion people getting access to, to water and sanitation. And that's the power of looking at it from the lens of capital rather than just using charity to actually go drill the well and give it away. Yes. We can use the charity to scale this up dramatically. And the great news about that is that you're driving down the philanthropic cost of capital per person reached, right? So, so if you have a, a, a classic well system, right, you say it's, a, it's roughly $25 to give somebody clean water for life. Yeah. If you're doing this, this type of work instead, that money comes back. It's a 99% repayment. So, it, so it comes back and it goes out again. And so, and so as it keeps cycling through, the cost per person reach just keeps dropping and heading towards zero. So in our mm -hmm. most mature programs, it's already we're under $5 to give somebody clean water for life um, you know, per person. So. And you're giving investors good returns. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Above our projections. Above actually. our projections, actually. Okay, yes. Yes. <laughs> good news. Do you feel, though, that there is a movement for investors and alike, and even consumers, that they want to invest with social responsibility? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. And yes is the answer. And, and, and you really hear it here. And we've been having conversations. It's different from four years ago. Like these, these companies, and I'm sure you're seeing this too, they really are, and, and, and that's about the consumers moving them in that direction. It matters to consumers. It matters to millennials. Like mm -hmm. the partnership we have with Stella Artois, they, that, you know, they're putting very real money behind this because, they, because it matters to the people who, it matters to their consumers yeah. and they know that. And, 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 so, and so that's a wonderful thing. And it, and it means that all of us yeah. uh, have a voice in this conversation and, 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 are, and, and are able to move these corporations. They want to be, they want to, they want to, uh, be responsible to their shareholders, but also, you know, as they say to their stakeholders. Yeah. I mean, that's something that we've heard a lot this yeah. week. Do you think, though, that access to clean water and sanitation, that you're working so hard to achieve for so many people, do enough people care about that? Hmm. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah. It's the, it's, it's the, it's, we always talk about the first hurdle we have to clear coming from the West is mm -hmm. to just 
help people because it's not a relatable issue the yeah. way you exactly. know yeah. cancer or AIDS or we all have family members or friends we've all been touched personally by those things yeah. so it's easier to kind of uh, relate if, and, and to fundraise around that uh, clean water as Gary said is is ubiquitous for all of us and so it's so that's kind of the first hurdle we have to clear is explain the magnitude of the problem and not just the needless death uh, and, you know, what Bono calls the stupid death, you know, the completely preventable death. It's also about, you know, if, if you're a girl and you're not in school because you're collecting water and you're fetching water, what, what, what does the rest of your life look like, right? And these conversations that we have all over the world with these kids who, who just, who, who, you, you ask them what they're gonna do when they grow up and, and, and they answer just like my girls, you know, answer. Like, they have these hopes and these dreams and, and they have this opportunity to live to their potential because their basic needs are met and so they're in school and they're focusing on their futures. Absent that, they're just in this death spiral of poverty and they're just trying to survive to the next day and, and, and so their outcomes are just completely different. Look, Matt, I have to ask you, because I know you're a father of four girls, um, and I remember talking to you, um, you know, in Davos previously, and you talked about your own childhood, and your mother, who's a teacher, took you as, as a young child to places to, to put that, to ingrain that giving back into you. What, what was it personally for you that you thought, right, I've got to use my platform, I'm going to use my celebrity, I'm going to go out there and make a difference? Um, well, I think I think a lot of it came from my parents, and and yes, and that's a good memory you have. It yes, my mother did take me to, um, you know, to Mexico and to Guatemala, as, and and I did get to see extreme poverty up close yeah. as a teenager, and it, and that had a profound effect on me. And 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 my wife and I are trying to do that with our kids because, you know, it's very hard as a child to to understand the world outside of your own little uh, your own little neighborhood, and so that's a real privilege that we have to kind of. Um, to share that with them, and 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 just personally, to it's a, it's an odd thing to wake up with a platform. You know what I mean? And as you know, it's it's odd for people to suddenly know who you are. And and I think dep it, it, you know it, it's it's a very intense and kind of personal question. But it felt mm -hmm. I felt like you know I, I wanted to maximize the positive impact that I could have, and so I, I and I chose this issue because it, it's it's massively complex. It's interesting. It's, it's hugely important. It undergirds all of these issues of extreme poverty. And nobody in the West is really talking about it. And so it felt like the right well, place. Well, Matt, you always talk about it. And, and it's very solvable, right? That's, right. that's what is all those things. Plus, we know how to get it done. Yes. And how do we catalyze the, the support to make that happen? And that's, that's really one of the reasons why we're here, because we so believe that this can work. I mean, the fact, uh, you know, you'll hear Bill Gates talk about this a lot and Hans Rosling and his book, Factfulness. It's like, there's so much that's right with the world. We're not, you know, we're not there yet, but it's much better than we think. In fact, more than two billion people have lifted themselves out of extreme poverty in the last two decades. And those are people who really want to improve their water and sanitation. And that's why you know, they're showing up. They're paying these costs now, what we call these coping costs, to those water vendors and their time. And that's about $300 billion a year in coping costs. So we believe that if we can just move the numbers around, the dollars around, so many more people can get access to water and sanitation. And here, we really believe this because the concentration of wealth in this world has never been greater. Yeah. What was it you were talking about? The 26 richest people well, now? That was in the Times this week. It I was yeah, yeah, so yeah. 26, but yeah. 26, yeah, or I have the exact same yeah. wealth as the bottom three people. Right, yeah. and, that's what, extraordinary. and how do we unleash that, right? What's yeah. the marginal utility of one more dollar to those people relative to what they could be doing with somebody who needs water and sanitation? You've taken this on. Uh, Waterdog.org is doing all of this, but what about governments? Should they be doing more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the canon they are. I mean, the, we're, we're great, uh, really grateful for our work with the government of India, for instance. They're doing so much with their Clean India program, this Wash Bharat. And what they're doing is they're like stimulating incredible demand for people to improve their sanitation, to build simple toilets, right? And yet what they isn't always there is all the capital needed. So they can raise this awareness and we can bring the water credit with the different state governments so that the people can actually build the toilets that they want with, with the loan. So we definitely believe that we can be a catalyst with governments and partner with them and it's mutually reinforcing.
Of course, one of the big topics here at Davos is tackling climate change as well as oceans and sustainability. But what happens when the US, as it's done, has pulled out of climate change and the most powerful nation in the world? How does that affect not only that, but the, the work that you're trying to do as well? I mean, it's a big step in the wrong direction, obviously. But, uh, you know, our thoughts go to, obviously, the, 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 the most vulnerable people will be the people most affected um, by that. And, that's, and those are the people we're trying to uh, get this access to. So hopefully, uh, you know, um, you know a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of positive steps have been reversed, and, and, uh, and, and uh, hopefully we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll turn the ship back yeah. around in the other direction. Well, well I think in, on the climate change issue, what people don't realize is how much water supply is contributing to climate change. You look at California, for instance, 20% 20, yes. 20 of all electricity used in California is used to pump and treat and move water. It's, it's astounding, the, the carbon footprint of water. And then when you, you look at things like, well, I, I did some quick numbers the other day, right? It's, we have to move four trillion tons of water every year. Think about the energy of making that happen. And I was comparing it like to what, you know, we're all tuned into like Amazon two-day delivery now and like all the carbon footprint of that. And to move that same amount of weight with Amazon, you would have to get 300 shipments to your house every day to equivalent the, the weight of the water. So the, the carbon footprint of this is really enormous. So we have to see water not as this hidden thing that's kind of behind the curtains, uh, but something that could be the low-hanging fruit in tackling climate change. And Matt, I've got to ask you, I remember sitting exactly here on the stage mm -hmm. with you and Gary, um, and it was 2017, January, mm -hmm. and we, I asked you the question about the newly elected President Trump, and, and you said we've got to give him a, a chance. Mm -hmm. And I remember you saying that. How do you feel now? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Wasn't I, to I, be funny. I, I, uh, <laughs> What I said then and what I still feel is I, I root very strongly for the, the president of, of our country. I, 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 we, we, need, we need him to do well. We, we, we you know, that, that's good for everybody. And uh, obviously I didn't vote for him. That's not a secret. Um, mm -hmm. uh, for anybody who's ever heard me talk about anything, it's probably not a surprise. But, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, but that, you know, th that doesn't mean I don't want what's best for, for, mm -hmm. for the country. I mean, we're... we're uh, um, we're halfway through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Might not be halfway through, you never know. Could be, could, could be, we could yeah. be almost all the way through, <laughs> you never know. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but no, I, 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 I think every sensible person does root for uh, the success of the American president because obviously that has a huge effect on the entire world. Would you ever consider going into politics? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> You're always very eloquent and passionate on, on, on the subject. You, Harvard. There are there are other wonderful people who are who are all who are you know there's there's a good there's a there's a great group of politicians up and coming that I'll be happy to support. <laughs> and some ones that have that that there's some 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 of the people who've been around for a long time that I that I support. Who who would you like to support? You're saying that there are some that you would. Can you? Well, there's going to be a huge Democratic field. I mean, I per, I I love Joe Biden, mm. and mm -hmm. and especially now, particularly with our institutions <laughs> under such attack. Yes. Um, I I think it would be a great signal to the world if we put somebody who is established and very stable and uh, very wise <laughs> back in charge, mm -hmm. you know, just to right the ship. Look, there's this huge field of up and coming yeah. people. You know, in California, we have you know, Kamala Harris, who I think is yes. absolutely brilliant. And, yeah. uh, and I, I would love to see her someday be the president of the United States. And if that happened in 2020, I'd be very happy with that, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you travel the world with water.org and you're on the ground and you're trying to do the work that you're doing, do people understand the challenges coming from an America that has become more nationalistic? Well, I, I, what I see 
you know, we were just in Indonesia uh, last fall together, uh, is that, that people can distinguish between the American people and kind of the, the government, right? And in fact, you know, you traveled to Central America a lot uh, back, you know, when you were younger and I was there in the 80s. And, and yet, you know, we had this huge thing going on there with the Contras. And yet, when people would see me, they would disassociate like what our government is doing for me. And they see us as kind of the, the hope to yes. message to, to individuals that, Yes, we, we are still a global family, and despite, you know, uh, governments that kind of come and go, they understood the connection that we were trying to make between the American people and the support that they, that they were giving. I remember one time in Honduras with this group of people uh, that were benefiting from one of our early projects, and one of the, the gentlemen in the back of the room stood up and said, is it a law that in America you have to come and help us with things like this with water projects, because he just, he couldn't kind of comprehend. Yeah. It's like, you mean you're here just because you care? And like, yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. And so it, this is a way for us to, to connect the American people with others around the world much more directly. And how far away are we, do you think? I mean, we have the UN Sustainable Development Goals. A lot of people are talking about 2020 as being such an important turning point, uh, and also 2030. Yeah. But yeah. how far away are we for access to clean water and sanitation for all? So that's great. Uh, so our mission statement at water.org, literally the, the mission statement of our organization is we envision a day when, when everyone on Earth can access safe water and sanitation, and, 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 and we envision that in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. So that, of course, raised the question as we were sitting in a, <laughs> this McKinsey boardroom 10 years ago, going, Wait, whose life are we talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Who's the youngest and healthiest person in the room? Um, but, but no, we do, because as Gary was saying before, and what we would like everyone to leave with is, is the understanding that this is solvable. Yes. Right, and and so it's just about the you know putting putting the you know the the solutions in place and the, and the will to do that and engagement with the issue. Yeah, well, and I think we can sprint. I think w by 2030 we can get this done. I mean, the sustainable development goal number six is all about water and sanitation. Yes. And the, the the key thing about that is the price tag for that is enormous. It's about a trillion dollars between now and then to get these services implemented and maintained. And so again, that circles us back to like, why should we be hopeful when there's such a huge price tag? It's because all that money that's needed is in the system. And how do we get smarter? How do we innovate? That's what we do at water.org all the time, is like, what's the next thing? What's the next piece of leverage that we can get? Because if we wake up every morning and see that trillion dollar price tag, yeah. we know we have to do this smarter and more efficiently all the time. And just finally, what is your vision now? What is the message that you want to put across here for water.org? Gary, I'll start with you. I think that this problem is solvable yeah. and it can be solved in our in our lifetime and it's very actionable. I mean we we do need that additional philanthropic capital. That's why we show up at Davos. Like I said, that additional 20 million could mean water for a, a billion people. Uh, and so that's the message that it's, it's solvable, we can do it, uh, but we need to rally the support and direct the, the philanthropic as well as the uh, social impact investing capital to, to unleash the power. Uh, in that to serve humanity with safe water. Um, Matt, how do you unleash that power? Uh, well, by doing things like this, by spreading the word, you know, and when you start helping people understand the issue and they start telling people that's really, it's really incalculable the amount of impact that you can have. And um, ultimately, the more people who get involved and engaged, the, you know, the quicker we'll solve it. So, so, I, so I would echo what Gary said, that it is, that it is solvable, but it's gonna, it's gonna take engagement from, from everybody. Matt Damon, Gary White, thank you so much for thank joining so me today. Thank you.